Part 2 The author quoted in the second chapter of this book has asserted in an outburst of passionate rhetoric that the words used in our authorized version of the New Testament to express endless duration are simply mistranslations, which ought not to stand any longer in our English Bibles. Such statements are made so often and so boldly, and they are so calculated to mislead the unlearned and unstable, that it may be well to give them a more definite reply than has been already offered in these pages. Their only foundation is in the transparent fallacy that the meaning of a word is governed solely by etymology. They who take this ground would doubtless resent being called idiots, and yet by their own test the word means merely a person without official position, and it is thus used in our English classics. Neither would they like to hear their sons described as knaves, albeit the term means etymologically no more than a lad. To seek out the derivation of a word is always interesting and generally helpful. But the meaning of a word depends entirely on its use. Here then is a simple test by which the present controversy can be solved. My purpose is not to enter on a lengthened dissertation on this subject, nor yet to appeal to the scholarship of Christendom to refute the dictum I have quoted but simply to lay before the reader a list of the passages in question, and, subject to a very few remarks, to leave him to decide the matter for himself, 120, any person of common intelligence is competent to undertake the task, and the immense importance of the issue makes it a duty to do so. The question, remember, is not at all, as is so often stated, whether the words mean necessarily an always infinite duration, but whether as used in scripture they usually bear that meaning. Even our own word everlasting is at times applied to the hills of earth, and even to perennial flowers, and so in every language such words are used sometimes in a wide and sometimes in a restricted sense, and that, too, without any regard to their derivation. The word alpha nu iota omicron occurs 71 times in the New Testament, and, excepting in only four passages, it is invariably rendered by everlasting or eternal. To deal with the four exceptional passages first, it is rendered forever in Philemon 15, and in Romans 16 verses 25 and 2 Timothy 1 9, and Titus 1 verse 2, it is used in its primary sense, and by the paraphrase used by the translators this is admirably conveyed to the English reader. The words are literally since, or before, Ionian times, and the translation is since, or before, the world began. Probably no other rendering could convey as accurately the sense of the original. In these three passages the revisers render it eternal, which is intolerable pedantry if by eternal they mean limited in duration, or obvious error if they use the word in its proper sense. Of the 67 remaining instances where the word occurs it is used 44 times of the life of the saved. It is also used of God, of the glory, of the kingdom, of salvation, of redemption, and of the gospel. In all these passages it is rendered by everlasting or eternal, and the only question here is, whether the translators erred in regarding these words, as in fact they did, as synonyms. Upon this it may be remarked without offense that the question is one, not of theology, but of philology, and here the authority of the translators stands far higher than that of their revisers and critics. All are agreed that eternal is a correct rendering in all these passages, and the authorized version is itself a sufficient authority for the assertion that the words eternal and everlasting may be used interchangeably. But the author above quoted tells us that Alpha Nu Iota Omicron is in its second sense something spiritual, something above and beyond time mark what this involves. It is admitted that in scripture the word is generally used in its secondary sense. Therefore the things of which it is predicated are above and beyond time. But the mind is by transcendental law incapable of conceiving any existence apart from duration in time. The only possible conception, therefore, of something above and beyond time is that of something which never had a beginning and never will have an end, in other words, of endless existence both in the past and in the future. We conclude then that with these teachers, eternal means, not less, but a great deal more than we usually understand by everlasting. For instance, both the Adam life and the Christ life are everlasting, for they shall never cease to exist, but the Christ life is not. Only everlasting, but eternal, for it never began to exist. It was with the Father, it has been manifested to men, and they who believe in Christ now possess it. The following are the passages where Alpha Nu Iota Omicron Ionios is used, omitting the four texts already mentioned, and the 44 in which it is applied to life. Two are specially noteworthy. In Matthew 25 verse 46 the word is used in the same sentence of the punishment of the lost, and the life of the saved, 
and in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 it is used in contrast with temporal, a sufficient answer to those who tell us that temporal is its essential meaning. Matt. 18 colon 8. To be cast into everlasting fire. 25 colon 41. Depart ye cursed into everlasting fire. 25 colon 46. Go away into everlasting punishment. Mark. 329. In danger of eternal damnation. Luke. 16, 9. Receive you into everlasting habitations. Ram. 16, 26. The commandment of the everlasting God. 2 Cor. 4, 17. Exceeding an eternal weight of glory. 4, 18. The things which are not seen are eternal. 5 colon 1. House not made with dot hands eternal in the heavens. 2 Thess. 1 colon 9. Punished with everlasting destruction. 2 16. Hath given us everlasting consolation. 1 Tim. 6 16. To whom be honor and power everlasting. 2 Tim. 2.10. In Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Hab. 5.9. The author of eternal salvation. 6.2. And of eternal judgment. 9.12. Having obtained eternal redemption. 9.14. Who through the eternal spirit offered himself. 9.15. The promise of eternal inheritance. 1320. Blood of the everlasting covenant. 1 Peter. 510. Called us unto his eternal glory. 2 Peter. 111. The everlasting kingdom of our Lord. Jude. 7. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Rev. 14.6. Having the everlasting gospel. Show less. The meaning of alphanu, ion, has been discussed at pages 31-32 ante. It is unnecessary to set out all the passages where it occurs, but the following list includes all the passages where it is used in the three several phrases which in the New Testament ordinarily express endless future duration. That such is unmistakably the meaning of these phrases the reader can judge for himself. To urge that the first of these expressions cannot really mean forever, because the other and stronger expressions can mean no more, is to trade both upon popular ignorance of the science of words, and upon an untenable theory of inspiration, 121, moreover, the argument may be turned against those who use it, for it only confirms the obvious conclusion that the last and strongest of these phrases must mean all time to come. And it will be noticed that this same phrase is used both of the life of God and of the existence of the lost. Epsilon Tau Nu Alpha Nu Alpha. Matt. 2119. Grow on me henceforward forever. Mark. 329. Against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, lit. Not forever. 1114. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Luke 155 To Abraham and to his seed forever. John 414 Whosoever drinketh shall never thirst, lit. Not forever. 651 If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. 658 Eateth of this bread shall live forever. 835. The servant Abadeth not in the house forever, but the son Abadeth forever. 851. If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death, lit. Not forever. 852. Keep my saying, he shall never taste of death, lit. Not forever. 
1028. They shall never perish, lit. Not forever. 1126. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, lit. Not forever. 1234. That Christ abideth forever. 13 8. Thou shalt never wash my feet, lit. Not forever. 1416. He may abide with you forever. 1 COR. 813. I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lit. Not forever. 2 COR. 9 9. His righteousness remaineth forever. Hab. 1 8. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, Epsilon Tanu Alpha Nu Alpha to Omicron Alpha Nu Omicron. 5 colon 6. Thou art a priest forever. 620. Made in high priest forever. 717. Thou art a priest forever. 721. Thou art a priest forever. 724. This, man, because he continueth ever. 728. Son, who is consecrated forevermore. 1 Peter. 123. The word of God which liveth and abideth forever. 125. The word of the Lord endureth forever. 1 John. 2.17. Doeth the will of God abideth forever. 2 John. 2. Shall be with us forever. Jude. 13. The blackness of darkness forever. Show less. Epsilon to Omicron Alpha Nu Alpha. Matt. 613. The power and the glory forever. Luke. 133. Over the house of Jacob forever, and Ram. 125. The Creator, who is blessed forever. 9.5. Who is over all, God blessed forever. 1136. To whom be glory forever. 1627. Be glory through Jesus Christ forever. 2 COR 1131 Christ, which is blessed forevermore. Hab 13 8 Yesterday, and today, and forever. Jude 25 Dominion and power both now and ever, Epsilon Pi Nu to Alpha to Omicron Alpha Nu Alpha. Show less. Epsilon to Omicron Alpha Nu Alpha Tanu Alpha Nu Omega Nu. Gal. 1 colon 5. To whom be glory forever and ever. F. 321. Throughout all ages, world without end, Tau Gamma Epsilon Nu Epsilon to Omicron Alpha Nu Omicron Tanu Alpha Nu Omega Nu. Phil. 420. Our Father be glory forever and ever. 1 Tim. 117. Be honor and glory forever and ever. 2 Tim. 418. To whom be glory forever and ever. Hab. 1321. To whom be glory forever and ever. 1 Peter. 411. Praise and dominion forever and ever. 511. Glory and dominion forever and ever. Rev. 1 colon 6. Glory and dominion forever and ever. 118. Behold, I am alive forevermore. 4 colon 9. Who liveth forever and ever? 410. Worship him that liveth forever and ever. 513. Unto the Lamb forever and ever. 514. 
worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. 7.12. Unto our God forever and ever. 10.6. Swear by him that liveth forever and ever. 11.15. He shall reign forever and ever. 14.11. Their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, Epsilon Alpha Nu Alpha Alpha Nu Omega Nu. 15.7. God, who liveth forever and ever. 19.3. Her smoke rose up forever and ever. 20.10. Tormented day and night forever and ever. 22.5. They shall reign forever and ever. Show less. The following are the passages where the words are used which are rendered immortality or immortal in the authorized version. Theta Alpha Nu Alpha Sigma Alpha, Athanasia. 1 C O R. 1553. This mortal must put on immortality. 1554. Shall have put on immortality. 1 Tim. 616. God, who only hath immortality. Show less. Phi Theta Alpha Rho Sigma Alpha, Aftharsia. Ram. 2 colon 7. Seek for glory and honor and immortality. 1 cor. 1542. It is raised in incorruption. 1 cor. 1550. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. 1553. This corruptible must put on incorruption. 1554. Shall have put on incorruption. F. 624. That love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. 2 Tim. 110. Hath brought life and immortality to light. Titus. 2 colon 7. Uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Show less. Phi Theta Alpha Roto Omicron, Aftartos. Ram. 123. The glory of the uncorruptible God. 1 C O R. 925. But we an incorruptible, crown. 1552. The dead shall be raised incorruptible. 1 Tim. 117. Unto the King Eternal, Immortal. 1 Peter. 1 colon 4. To an inheritance incorruptible. 123. Born again, of incorruptible, seed. 3 colon 4. In that which is not corruptible. Show less. The following are the passages in which the several words are used which are sometimes rendered hell in the authorized version, or which relate to the abode of the lost. Delta Eta, Hades. Matt. 1123. Capernaum, shalt be brought down to hell. 1618. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Luke. 1015. Shalt be thrust down to hell. 1623. In hell he lift up his eyes. Acts. 227. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. 231. His soul was not left in hell. 1 C.O.R. 1555. O grave, where is thy victory? Rev. 118. And have the keys of hell and of death. 6 colon 8. Death and hell followed with him. 2013. Death and hell delivered up the dead. 2014. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Show less. Gamma Epsilon Nu Nu Alpha, Gienna. Matt. 522. Shall be in danger of hell fire? 
529. Whole body should be cast into hell. 530. Whole body should be cast into hell. 1028. Able to destroy both soul and body in hell. 18 colon 9. Having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. 2315. More the child of hell than yourselves. 2333. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Mark. 943. Having two hands to go into hell. 945. Having two feet to be cast into hell. 947. Having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Luke. 12 colon 5. Hath power to cast into hell. James. 3 colon 6. The tongue is set on fire of hell. Show less. Taalfaro Taalfaro Omega, Tartaru. 2 Peter. 2 colon 4. But cast them down to hell, i.e. the angels that sinned. Beta Upsilon Sigma Sigma Omicron, Abusos. Luke. 831. Would not command them, the demons, to go out into the deep. Ram. 10 colon 7. Who shall descend into the deep? Rev. 9 colon 1. The key of the bottomless pit. 9 colon 2. He opened the bottomless pit. 9 11. The angel of the bottomless pit. 11 colon 7. That ascendeth out of the bottomless pit. Rev. 17 colon 8. Shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. 20 colon 1. Having the key of the bottomless pit. 20 colon 3. Cast him into the bottomless pit. Show less. Phyro Alfaro, Freer. Luke. 14 colon 5. An ass or an ox fallen into a pit. John. 4.11. The well is deep. 4.12. Jacob, which gave us the well. Rev. 9.1. The key of the bottomless pit, lit. The pit of the abyss. 9.2. He opened the bottomless pit, lit. The pit of the abyss. 9 colon 2. There arose a smoke out of the pit. 9 colon 2. The smoke of the pit. Show less. The following are the words rendered destruction in the authorized version, with a complete list of the passages where they severally occur, see pages 59, 60 anti. Pi lambda epsilon iota alpha. Apolia. Matt. 7.13. The way that leadeth to destruction. 26.8. To what purpose is this waste? Mark. 14.4. Why was this waste of the ointment? John. 27.12. The son of perdition, Judas. Acts. 8.20. Thy money perish, lit. B to destruction. 25.16. Romans to deliver any man to die. Rom. 9.22. Vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Phil. 1.28. An evident token of perdition. 319. Whose end is destruction? 2 Thess. 2 colon 3. The son of perdition, the Antichrist. 1 Tim. 6 colon 9. Drown men in destruction and perdition. Hab. 1039. Who draw back unto perdition? 2 Peter. 
2 colon 1 shall bring in damnable heresies 2 colon 1 bring upon themselves swift destruction 2 colon 2 shall follow their pernicious ways 2 peter 2 colon 3 their damnation slumbereth not 3 colon 7 judgment and perdition of ungodly men 316 unto their own destruction rev 17 colon 8 and go into perdition 1711 and goeth into perdition show less kappa alpha theta alpha rho epsilon sigma iota catharsis 2 cor 10 colon 4 the pulling down of strongholds 10 colon 8 and not for your destruction 13 10 to edification and not to destruction Show less. Lambda Epsilon Theta Rho Omicron, Olethros. 1 COR. 5 colon 5. For the destruction of the flesh. 1 Thess. 5 colon 3. Then sudden destruction cometh. 2 Thess. 1 colon 9. With everlasting destruction from. 1 Tim. 6 colon 9 which drown men in destruction and perdition show less sigma nu tau iota mu nu alpha sun trima rom 316 destruction and misery are in their ways the following are the words which are rendered destroy in the authorized version with a complete list of the passages where those terms are used which are held in this controversy to imply annihilation whether such a meaning attaches to these words the reader can judge for himself, see pages 59, 60 ante. Pi lambda lambda upsilon nu iota, apolumi. Matt. 2.13. Seek the young child to destroy him. 5.29. That one of thy members should perish. 5.30. That one of thy members should perish. 8.25. Lord, save us, we perish. Matt. 9.17. The wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. 10.6. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 10.28. Able to destroy both soul and body in hell. 10.39. He that findeth his life shall lose it and he that lusseth his life for my sake shall find it. 1042. Shall in no wise lose his reward? 1214. How they might destroy him. 1524. Unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 1625. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. 1811. Is come to save that which was lost. 1814. That one of these little ones should perish. 2141. He will miserably destroy those wicked men. 22 7. The king destroyed those murderers. 26 52. Shall perish with the sword. 27 20. Should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Mark. 124. Art thou come to destroy us? 222. The bottles will be marred. 3 6. How they might destroy him. 438. Carest thou not that we perish? 835. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life. 922. Into the waters to destroy him. 941. He shall not lose his reward. 1118. 
sought how they might destroy him. 11 colon 9. He will come and destroy the husbandman. Luke. 434. Art thou come to destroy us? 537. And the bottles shall perish. 6 colon 9. To save life or to destroy it? 824. Saying, Master, Master, we perish. 924. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life. 925. And lose himself, or be cast away. 956. Is not come to destroy men's lives. 1151. Which perished between the altar and. 13 colon 3. Ye shall all likewise perish. 13 colon 5. Ye shall all likewise perish. 1333. That a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. 15 colon 4. If he lose one of them, doth not go after that which is lost, until. 15 colon 6. Found my sheep which was lost. 15 colon 8. If she lose one piece, doth not. 15 colon 9. Found the peace which I had lost. 1517. And I perish with hunger. 1524. He was lost and is found. 1532. And was lost and is found. 1727. The flood came and destroyed them all. 1729. From heaven and destroyed them all. 1733. To save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life. 1910. To save that which was lost. 1947. People sought to destroy him. 2016. Come and destroy these husbandmen. 2118. Not an hair of your head perish. John. 315. Believeth in him should not perish. 316. Believeth in him should not perish. 612. That remain, that nothing be lost. 627. For the meat which perisheth. 639. Given me, I should lose nothing. 1010. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. 1028. They shall never perish, neither. 1150. That the whole nation perish not. 1225. He that loveth his life shall lose it. 1712. I have kept, and none of them is lost. 18.9. Thou gavest me have I lost none. 1814. One man should die for the people. Acts. 537. He also perished, i.e. Judas of Galilee. Ram. 212. Shall also perish without law. 1415. Destroy not him with thy meat. 1 cor. 118. To them that perish foolishness. 119. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. 811. Shall the weak brother perish? 10. 9. And were destroyed of serpents. 10. 10. Were destroyed of the destroyer. 1518. Fallen asleep in Christ are perished. 2 cor. 2.15. Are saved, and in them that perish. 4 colon 3. It is hid to them that are lost. 4 colon 9. Cast down, but not destroyed. 2 Thess. 2.10. 
unrighteousness in them that perish. Hab. 1.11. They shall perish, but thou remainest. James. 1.11. The fashion of it perisheth. 4.12. Is able to save and to destroy. 1 Peter. 1.7. Precious than of gold that perisheth. 2 Peter. 3.6. Being overflowed with water, perished. 3.9. Not willing that any should perish. 2 John. 8. That we lose not these things. Jude. 5. Destroyed them that believed not. 11. Perished in the gainsaying of Kor. Show less. Delta Iota Alpha Phi Theta Epsilon Rho Omega, Diaph Thero. Luke. 12.33. Neither moth corrupteth. 2 Cor. 4.16. Though our outward man perish. 1 Tim. 6 colon 5. Disputings of men of corrupt minds. Rev. 8 colon 9. Third part of ships were destroyed. 1118. Destroy them which destroy the earth. Show less. Kappa Alpha Theta Alpha Iota Rho Omega, Catherio, to take down, or pull down. Used nine times in the New Testament. Translated destroy in Acts 13 verse 19 and 1927. Kappa Alpha Tau Alpha Lambda Omega, Cataluo, to undo or throw down, occurs 17 times in the New Testament. Translated destroy nine times, viz, Matt 5 17, twice, 26 colon 61, 27 colon 40, Mark 14 58, 15 29, Acts 6 verse 14, Romans 14 verse 20, Galatians 2 verse 18. Kappa Alpha Tau Alpha Rho Gamma Omega, Catarjo. Luke. 13 colon 7. Why cumbereth it the ground? Ram. 3 colon 3. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? 331. Do we then make void the law? 414. And the promise made of none effect. 6 colon 6. That the body of sin might be destroyed. 7 colon 2. She is loosed from the law of her husband. 7 colon 6. Now we are delivered from the law. 1 cor. 128. To bring to naught things that are. 2 colon 6. The princes of this world that come to naught. 613. God shall destroy both it and them. 13 colon 8. Prophecies, they shall fail, knowledge, it shall vanish away. 13.10. That which is in part shall be done away. 13.11. I put away childish things. 15.24. When he shall have put down all rule. 15.26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. 2 C.O.R. 3 colon 7. Which glory was to be done away? 3 11. That which is done away. 3 13. To the end of that which is abolished. 3 14. Which veil is done away in Christ? Gal. 3 17. Make the promise of none effect. 5 colon 4. Christ is become of no effect unto you. 5.11. Then is the offense of the cross ceased. F. 2.15. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. 2 Thess. 2.8. And shall destroy the Antichrist with the brightness of his coming. 2 Tim. 1.10. Christ, who hath abolished death. 
Hab. 214. He might destroy him that had the power of death. Show less. Lambda Omega, Luo. To loosen, dissolve, undo. Occurs 43 times in the New Testament, and is translated destroy in John 2 verse 19, destroy this temple, and 1 John 3 verse 8, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Lambda Omicron Theta Rho Epsilon Omega, Olathruo. Hebrews 11 verse 28. Lest he that destroyed the firstborn. Lambda Omicron Theta Rho Epsilon Upsilon Tau, destroyer, occurs 1 Corinthians 10 verse 10, and is used Acts 3 verse 23. Pi Omicron Rho Theta Omega, Portheo. To lay waste, harass. Is used three times in the New Testament, viz, Acts 9 verse 21, Galatians 1 verse 13 and 23. Phi Theta Epsilon Rho Omega, Theiro. To corrupt. Used eight times in the New Testament, viz, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 17, If any man defile the temple of God, him will God destroy. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33, 2 Cor 7 colon 2, 9 colon 3, Ephesians 4 verse 22, Jude 10, Revelation 19 verse 2. Phi Theta Omicron Rho, Thora. Corruption. Occurs nine times in the New Testament, viz, Romans 8 verse 21, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 42 and 50, Galatians 6 verse 8, Colossians 2 verse 22, Perish, 2 Peter 1 colon 4, 2 12, Beasts made to be taken and destroyed, shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and 219. The following are the words rendered torment or tormented in the authorized version, with a complete list of the passages where they occur. Beta Sigma Alpha Nu Omicron, 122, Basanos. Matt. 424. With diverse diseases and torments. Luke. 16.23. He lift up his eyes, being in torments. 16.28. Lest they also come into this place of torment. Show less. Beta Alpha Sigma Alpha Nu Iota Sigma Mu, Basinismos. Rev. 9.5. Their torment was as the torment of a scorpion. 14.11. The smoke of their torment ascendeth. 18.7 So much torment and sorrow give her. 18.10 For the fear of her torment. 18.15 For the fear of her torment. Show less. Beta Alpha Sigma Alpha Nu Zeta Omega, Bassanizo. Matt. 8.6 Sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. 829. Art thou come hither to torment us? 1424. Midst of the sea tossed with waves. Mark. 5,7. That thou torment me not. 648. He saw them toiling and rowing. Luke. 828. I beseech thee torment me not. 2 Peter. 2 colon 8. Vexed his righteous soul. Rev. 9 colon 5. Should be tormented five months. 1110. These two prophets tormented them. 12 colon 2. In birth and pain to be delivered. 1410. He shall be tormented with fire. 2010. Shall be tormented day and night. Show less. Beta Alpha Sigma Alpha Nu Iota Sigma Tau Eta, Bassinists. Matt. 1834. Delivered him to the tormentors. Kappa Lambda Alpha Sigma Iota, Colosses. Matt. 25 colon 46. Into everlasting punishment. 1 John. 4.18. Because fear hath torment. Show less. Delta Upsilon Nu Omicron Nu Alpha Iota, Ajanami. Luke. 2.48. I have sought thee sorrowing. 
1624. For I am tormented in this flame. 1625. And thou art tormented. Acts. 2038. Sorrowing most of all for the words. Show less. Kappa Alpha Kappa Omicron Upsilon K Omicron Nu Upsilon Nu Omicron Kakukumonos. Hab. 1137. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented. 13 colon 3. Them which suffer adversity. Show less. 1. And this is, by the way, precisely the way the Lord loved Jacob and hated Esau in Romans 9 verse 13. The fact that Job, the most righteous man that ever lived, descended from Esau certainly shows that this hatred was not absolute abandonment in the sense the Calvinists believe. 2. I approached two Universalists individually with the question, can God lie if he wanted to? Both immediately responded, he could, but he doesn't. A misguided view of God's sovereignty has consumed reverence for his holiness. 3. Let us be clear, however, any amount of choosing to do good and refraining to do evil cannot reverse the judgment of God against sins already committed, let alone the state of our fallen nature, as inherited from Adam. To be saved we must have a Savior who can pay for our sins, and then complete a work in us, a miraculous new birth which he alone can do and to which we add nothing. He presents this grace gift to all, Titus 2 verse 11, and bestows it on all that humble themselves, 1 Peter 5 verse 5, and receive Jesus, John 1 verse 12, and his finished work on Calvary. For, here is Jen's literal translation of John 3 verse 16, For God did so love the world, that his Son the only begotten he gave, that everyone who was believing in him may not perish, but may have life age during. 5. One argument against ion meaning eternity is its usage in scripture in the plural as ages. You can't have more than one eternal age, they say. This reasoning is amusing to a mathematician. Math is full of examples of multiple eternities, infinities, some contained within others, some that are completely parallel or consecutive. The number of single fractions, i.e. one half, one third, one quarter, one fifth, etc. is infinite as the bottom number increases endlessly. Yet if one had an endless amount of time to mark them, the spots marking all of these are contained within a single yardstick. Once done, there are more uncounted spots on the yardstick than there are fractions, since all those fractions land on exactly half of the yardstick, the other half has just as much space. In fact, every gap between fractions could be divided as many times again. In fact, the number of points, real numbers, contained between any two arbitrary marks on a yardstick are infinitely greater than the entire infinite set of counting numbers, a completely new class of infinity. Thus a literal unbounded eternity of numbered days can occur in a moment of the next higher level of eternity. These are concepts that are introduced in high school math, how the notion of eternal ages would be confusing to folks who consider themselves instructors of men of the caliber of Sir Robert Anderson is interesting. 6. HTTP colon slash slash www.perseus.tufts.edu slash hopper slash text question mark doc equal sign Perseus percent sign 3A text D percent sign 3A 1999.01.0180 percent sign 3A text D percent sign 3 DTAM dot percent sign 3A section percent sign 3 D 29A. 7. Interesting that the Universalists will universally argue that this one word always means eternal, in answer to the critics that ask exactly how God would say eternal in Greek if he really wanted to. But it is only used twice in the New Testament, and they quickly point out that one of those cannot mean eternal, see footnote, page 31. Pseudolinguistics means never having to say you are sorry. 8. HTTP colon slash slash wwwnapoleon seriesorg slash research slash government slash diplomatic slash c underscore pressburg.html. 9. Vine's Expository Dictionary of New Testament Words, Fit, B3 Verb 2675, Caterizzo to make fit, to equip, prepare, cut up, down, artos, a joint, is rendered fitted in Romans 9 verse 22, of Vessels of Wrath, here the middle voice signifies that those referred to fitted themselves for destruction, as illustrated in the case of Pharaoh, the self-hardening of whose heart is accurately presented in the RV in the first part of the series of incidents in the Exodus narrative, which records Pharaoh's doings, only after repeated and persistent obstinacy on his part is it recorded that God hardened his heart. 
10, he would have also said so in Luke 16, the story of the rich man in hell. Instead he said, and beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, that would come from thence. Verses 26, cannot is the most final of words, a merciful God would surely have given some hope to the man, if there were some to be had. 11, Dr. Plumptray, The Spritz in Prison, page 8. 12, this is not the only feature of the writer's scheme which savors of Rome. He implicitly bases his statement on 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6, but surely no one who is not too absorbed by the study of the broad unifying principles of Scripture to give his attention to a particular passage, can fail to see that the Apostle is there contrasting, not the letter of Scripture with the spirit of it, but the Old Covenant with the New, Law with Grace. The texts to which the writer refers in support of his position shall be considered in the sequel. It is enough to say here that most of them have no special bearing on the question in dispute, see page 36, and aptly, post, and the rest are of no account for the author's purpose, unless they be construed to teach the universalism which he himself repudiates. As for his remarks on the word alpha iota nu iota omicron, nothing further need be said than he himself has elsewhere said in answer to his critics, some of the greatest masters of Greek, both in classical times and among the fathers, saw quite clearly that though the word might connote endlessness, by being attributively added to endless things, it had in itself no such meaning. 13. He has no warrant for including in the category the closing passage of Matt 25. And the latter half of Luke 16. 14. Delta Omicron Romans 1 verse 20, and Jude 6, where the everlasting chains are only until the day of judgment. 15. I do not stop to inquire whether such a conception be possible apart from revelation. The inquiry would be most appropriate if my subject were the Kantian philosophy and not the destiny of mankind. 16. Pi to Omicron Alpha Nu Omicron Omega to Omicron Alpha Nu Omicron Sigma Epsilon, Psalm 90 verse 2, LXX, the Hebrew being Mi Almadom. 17. Throughout the quotation the italics are my own. I have reluctantly quoted at such length that the reader may be enabled to judge what this doctrine implies. To refute the errors, expressed and implied, of this book, would involve a treatise upon each one of the fundamental truths of Christianity. If any can read the above extract unshocked by the heathen darkness and contemptuous unbelief which characterize it, it is idle to discuss the matter with them within the limits of the present volume. If anyone thinks this language too strong, let him turn back upon the quotation and seek to find where there is room for redemption in the writer's scheme. It is a deliberate and systematic denial of Christianity. 18. The words in inverted commas in the above paragraph are quoted from other parts of the book. 19. Finding, perhaps, that even in this infidel age the unchristianity of his book was too pronounced, the author has published a sequel in which he attempts to restate the question as a part of the Christian doctrine of atonement. But the sequel restates with increased definiteness his dogma of retribution, which denies the Christian doctrine of atonement altogether. It then offers as a new argument for his views, the theory that there is a surface current and a deeper current in Scripture, the former of which is false, as Israel's hope of the promised messianic kingdom. Next comes a disquisition on 1 Corinthians 5 verse 5, as proving that destruction may be a condition of salvation and on demoniacal possession in connection therewith. As the result, the veneer is somewhat strengthened perhaps, but the heathenism remains. 20. Do not such arguments as are here alluded to remind us of a king's baby children in the royal nursery discussing the fate of some notorious criminal and deciding that they knew their father so well as to be assured he could not and would not sign a death warrant? 21. Therefore, these passages tell against the view they are cited in support of, by weakening the popular argument based on the supposition that the saved will be an insignificant minority. 22. Acts 3 verses 21 to 24. On this passage, see Appendix, page 76 post. 23. See page 81 post. 24. On these and other passages of a like import see Appendix, part 1, page 76 post. 25, 2 Thessalonians 1 verses 7 to 9. 26, the author last referred to, with the candor which characterizes him, says, I confess I cannot perfectly explain all these texts. 27, the respective schemes of the first two writers seem inconsistent with belief in the resurrection of judgment.
The third writer dismisses it thus of the details of this resurrection, of the nature and state of the bodies of the judged, if indeed bodies in which there is any image of a man, and therefore of God, then are given to them and of the scene of judgment, very little is said in scripture. The meaning of this is clearly that the body given at the resurrection of judgment is merely a temporary clothing for the soul, and that the soul shall not be reunited to the heavenly and final body until after punishment shall have been endured. 28. The language of John 5 verse 24 is explicit. It is not that the believer shall not come into condemnation as the A of E renders it, but that he cometh into judgment, epsilon kappa rho sigma iota nu omicron kappa rho ka epsilon to alpha iota. This statement must not be made to clash with Romans 14 verse 10 and 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, which relate to the judgment of the saved. At the resurrection, the believer shall appear in the image of the heavenly, we shall be like him. That is to say, his destiny is not only fixed, but declared at the resurrection. For him, therefore, the judgment will be on that basis, it will be a matter of reward or loss, not of life or death. As Hebrews 9 verses 27 and 28 teaches, the cross of Christ in his glorious advent are, for the believer, the correlatives of death and judgment. Matt 25 31-46 describes a session of judgment for living nations on earth, and has no bearing on the special point here raised. 29, see note, page 39 ante. 30, I have already shown that of the books, quoted supra to practically ignore redemption. I desire to be perfectly fair, and I have searched the volume last noticed, which was the first written, and inspired the other two, to find a warrant for clearing the author from this reproach, but I cannot. And if such an one as he is betrayed into such language as the following, it may be taken as certain that the views he advocates are inconsistent with Christian doctrine. What does he say here, he writes, quoting Revelation 21 verses 5 to 8, but that all things shall be made new, though in the way to this the fearful and unbelieving must pass the lake of fire. The saints have died with Christ, not only to the elements of this world, but also to sin, that is the dark spirit world. The ungodly have not so died to sin. At the death of the body, therefore, and still more when they are raised to judgment, because their spirit yet lives, they are still within the limits of that dark and fiery world, the life of which has been and is the life of their spirit. To get out of this world there is but one way, death. Not the first, for that is past, but the second death. The italics are my own. The extraordinary mysticism which pervades this makes it difficult to fix its meaning, but I am unable to understand it if it does not teach that the lake of fire, the second death, is to the impenitent what the cross of Christ is to the believer. 31. Whether this be natural to the race, or the result of redemption, makes no difference to my argument. 32. I say advisedly, not duration merely. Eternal life, Drive Westcott writes, is not an endless duration of being in time but being of which time is not a measure. And again, it is beyond the limitations of time, it belongs to the being of God. Epistles of St. John, pages 205 and 207. But surely endless duration is implied in this, though it is not the main element in it. I do not stop to discuss wherein the above statement differs from Mr. Morris's view. 33. The passages in which St. Paul uses Theta Alpha Nu Alpha Sigma Alpha are in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 53 and 54, and 1 Timothy 6 verse 16. Why Theta Alpha Rho Sigma Alpha, in corruption, is rendered immortality in Romans 2 verse 7 and 2 Timothy 1 verse 10. It occurs also in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 42 and 50, 53, and 5 4, Ephesians 6 verse 24 and Titus 2 verse 7, Sincerity. 34. Of the causes which have led to the origination of the living matter, then, it may be said that we know absolutely nothing. But postulating the existence of living matter endowed with that power of hereditary transmission, and with that tendency to vary which is found in all such matter, Mr. Darwin has shown good reasons for believing that the interaction between living matter and surrounding conditions, which results in the survival of the fittest, is sufficient to account for the gradual evolution of plants and animals from their simplest to their most complicated forms. Professor Huxley, Encyclopedia Britannica, 9th edition, Biology, Volume 3, page 687. 35. Professor Drummond is enthusiastic over this definition of life in his charming book of parables, it is earnestly to be hoped that natural law will not be taken in any more serious light. 
The fact is, that having been betrayed into bracketing together Herbert Spencer and Jesus Christ as authors of rival definitions of eternal life, page 203, his hobby ran away with him, through all the centuries, he declares, revealed religion had this doctrine to itself. It has been reserved for modern biology at once to defend and illuminate this central truth of the Christian faith. This, although he has rightly stated at page 146 that no definition of life that has yet appeared can be said to be even approximately correct, and as he goes on to aver, at page 228, that to say that life is a correspondence, is only to express the partial truth. There is a principle of life. And yet he says, at page 215, all life consists essentially in correspondence with various environments. Moreover, the words of our blessed Lord in John 17 verse 3, as read in the original, cannot be taken as a definition of life, and more than in John 4 verse 34 he gave us a definition of his food. Without attempting to discuss that crux of the grammarians as to the telic force of Nu Alpha, we may assume that the particle does not introduce a definition. 36, Matt 1244, Luke 8 verses 14 and 43, 15 12, 30, 21 colon 4, 1 Timothy 2 verse 2, 2 Timothy 2 verse 4, 1 Peter 4 verse 3, 1 John 2 16, 3 17. 37, Trench's Synonyms. 38, Matt 18 colon 8 9, 25 colon 46, Mark 9 verses 43 and 45, 10 30, XGR. 39, John 5 verse 24, 1 John 3 verse 14. 40, 1 John 3 verse 15. 41, John 6 verse 53. 42, I shall be told probably that the author does not speak of death as extinction of being. This is true, and it is a signal proof of the skill with which his argument is conducted. Other writers had used the expression, and their position had been easily stormed in consequence, so he avoids it. But his argument implies it, and without it it has no force whatever. Therefore I have taken the liberty of expressing it. 43, John 5 verse 24, RV, CF 1 John 3 verse 14. 44, some advocates of conditional immortality do not admit this, but one must really draw a line somewhere as to turning aside to prove facts and truths accepted by all Christendom. 45, Genesis 3 verses 14 and 17, Deuteronomy 27 verses 15 and 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, etc. The same word rr in all these passages. 46, according to the author already quoted, both the law and the gospel deal with man as an integer, consisting of body and soul. The death incurred by sin was the destruction of this complex humanity. 47, the same writer avers that the survival of the soul at death is to establish continuity of personality for judgment. If no spirit survived, it might be truly said that a holy new being was then created to suffer for the offenses of another long passed away. Say we say if the man Christ Jesus did not rise from the dead a holy new being was called to life at the resurrection. 48, 2 Timothy 2 verse 8. 49, 1 Timothy 2 verse 5. 50, Acts 7 verse 56. 51, Matt 25 31. 52, John 5 verse 27. 53, some of the Italian tyrants in the Middle Ages did this very thing, and a reverend opponent of eternal punishment has had the temerity to compare God to such a monster, if there be an endless hell. If the author were not given up to a reprobate mind, he would have seen as he wrote the blasphemy that a thirty days hell followed by extinction would more fully satisfy the analogy. His argument is against any hell whatever. 54, see page 40 ante. 55, see the use of the same word in Leviticus 5 verses 2 and 4, 15, if a soul touch, etc., if a soul swear, etc., if a soul commit a trespass. In Leviticus 7 verse 20 we have the soul that eateth, and in 21:11 it is translated body. 56. The word rendered dead body in Revelation 11 verses 8 and 9 is pitamu alpha. James 2 verse 26 is the only seeming exception to the above statement. But the context shows that there the word dead is used in the same secondary or figurative sense as when we speak of a stone or a log being dead. And no English writer would now use our word kill as it is used in Matt 1028. The passage is explained by the elasticity which the word pi omicron capital epsilon nu omega possesses. 
According to Liddell and Scott it means, first, to kill, slay, secondly, to condemn to death, thirdly, to weary to death, to torment. 57. Here I am dealing only with those who accept revelation. 58. Anyone who has access to a good library will find in the Englishman's Hebrew concordance all the materials necessary to enable him to settle this question for himself. 59. It is an interesting fact that among the peasantry of the west and south of Ireland, with whom English is an acquired language, this is the common meaning of destroy. Anyone who is evicted, or robbed, or ill-treated, is said to be destroyed. 60. Lest he that destroyed, lambda omicron thetero epsilon omega nu, the firstborn should touch them, Hebrews 11 verse 28. 61. The champion of conditional immortality remarks on 1 Timothy 6 verse 9, as the Greek language does not afford two stronger expressions than these for denoting the idea of literal death and extinction of being, it requires a large amount of evidence to prove that they were intended by St. Paul to convey the idea of indestructible existence in torment. No one whose mind was not thoroughly warped by dwelling on this controversy would imagine for a moment that the Apostle here intended to convey either extinction of being or indestructible existence in torment. But the admission above made is valuable. These are the strongest expressions possible to express annihilation. That the first does not express that thought is certain, for it if did the addition of the second would be mere verbiage. The only question, therefore, is whether pi lambda epsilon iota alpha implies extinction. 62, see app, page 92 post. Nat 1028 demands special notice on account of the use which has been made of it, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Assume that death and destruction imply extinction, and this settles the whole question. But if, refusing to assume anything of the sort, we analyze the words here used and consider that they were intended to convey, the thought we shall take in at this, to man's power can reach the body only, not the soul, but God can destroy both. If we want to know what destroy means, we must inquire how the Lord used the word elsewhere, and this is precisely what I am now investigating. 63, p. 91 post. 64, of the Antichrist it is written, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8. The meaning of the word may be gathered from the only other passage where St. Paul uses it, if ye bite and devour one another take heed that ye be not consumed one of another, Galatians 5 verse 15. This word nu alpha lambda sigma cap omega occurs only once again, viz, in Luke 9 verse 54. Devour, in Hebrews 10 verse 27, is the common word for eating, here used in a figurative sense. In 1 Peter 5 verse 8, like use is made of the word generally rendered to swallow. 65, Matt 25 colon 41 and 46. The word kappa lambda alpha sigma iota, used in V of 46, occurs again only in 1 John 4 verse 18, fear hath torment. The kindred verb occurs Acts 4 verse 21 and 2 Peter 2 verse 9 only. It means primarily to prune, trees, to curtail, or check, and then to chastise or punish. Dr. Trench, synonyms, denies to it in scripture the special sense it bears in classical Greek of corrective punishment. 66, Luke 16 verses 19 to 31. Some perhaps may object that this is not the final state of the lost, but this question need not be discussed, for the sinner is in the flames of Gehenna, see fair. 23, 24, and there for the fire, whatever it means, does not imply extinction. I really must decline to notice the view of the passage urged by one of the writers cited in an earlier chapter, which represents dives as one of the elect people. 67, Rev 1920, 2010, 14, 15, 11 colon 1. 68, Matt 25 colon 44, Luke 13 verses 25 and 26. 69, I wish to guard against misrepresentation here. I appeal to the transcendental philosophy, not as affording the true solution of the difficulty, nothing is farther from my thought, but as a protest against allowing faith to waver in presence of a difficulty which can be so easily disposed of. 70, Philosophy 2 10, 11. 71, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 28. 72, I.B. ver.24. 73, John 5 verses 25 to 27.
The writer specially referred to in the above paragraph seeks to establish his point by assuming that scripture statements on this subject are marked by a contradiction, antithesis, he calls it, to be accounted for by the creature being viewed sometimes in a personal, sometimes in a federal aspect. Such a theory is always open to suspicion, here it seems wholly baseless. The passages he cites to illustrate it are 1 Corinthians 15 verse 22, as compared with Romans 2 verse 7, and Galatians 6 verses 2 and 5. If the exposition of 1 Cor 15 offered at page 77 post, be accepted, that passage may not be used as he suggests. And the seeming contradiction in Galatians 6 verses 2 and 5, depends on the poverty of our translation. Burden in that passage represents two words in the original. Beta Omicron denotes the pressure of a weight which may be transferred, Phi Omicron wrote Omicron knew the load which each must carry for himself. In this world everyone is his own proper load to bear, but some are burdened. And to relieve such as to fulfill the law of Christ. 74. The more one studies the fathers the wider appears to be the gulf which separates their writings from the inspired scriptures. This remark applies with full force to Origen, whose writings are appealed to so confidently in this controversy. 75. On Rom 5 C. App, page 78 post. 76. 1 Peter 3 verses 19 and 20. I am here assuming that such is the meaning of the passage, although I own to having serious doubts upon the point. As Dean Alfred says, the literature of the passage is almost a library in itself. His own note is an admirable summary of that library. Dean Plumpter's book is somewhat disappointing on this particular passage, from which it derives its name. 77. Passages such as Psalm 9 verses 15 to 20, which may seem an exception, do not speak of the final state at all, but only of the God's providential judgments. The hell of the passage is Hades. The wicked shall be turned into Sheol, and all the nations that forget God. 78. John 6 verses 28 and 29. 79. John 1 verse 12. 80. The Bible is full of promises and prophecies of a time to come when God shall be known and feared from pole to pole. For aught we know, the population of the world will then be ten, or perchance a hundred times greater than at present. If we take this into account, together with the facts and possibilities of redemption noticed in the last few pages, is it so clear on which side the majority of mankind shall ultimately be found? It may be said that this is an appeal to our ignorance. True, but the prejudice I seek thus to break down is based entirely on our ignorance. The one is a set-off against the other, faith will ignore both, and leave the issue with God. 81, Rev. 14 11, 2010. On the word torment, see app, page 96 post. 82, The Analogy, Part 2, CH5, Section 6. 83, The Coming Prince, Second Edition, pages 116-17. The passage proceeds, the midnight agony in Gethsemane was thus the great antitype of that midnight scene in Egypt, when the destroying angel flashed through the land. And as his death was the fulfillment of his people's deliverance, so it took place upon the anniversary of that selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of Egypt by their armies. And attention is also called to the fact that the crucifixion was likewise the anniversary of the promise to Abraham. So the resurrection was the anniversary of the crossing of the Red Sea and also of the resting of the ark on Mount Ararat. 84, see page 51 ante. 85, Hebrews 10 verse 29. 86, Rom 1 colon 16-18. 87, Hebrews 6 verse 6. 88, The Gospel and Its Ministry, page 143. 89, 1 John 4 verse 9. 90, John 3 verse 16. 91, John 3 verse 18. 92, Galatians 6 verse 7. 93, Butler, The Analogy, PT5, CH2, Section 2. 94, page 39, Ante. 95, Pi Omicron Cap Alpha Tau Sigma Tau Alpha Sigma Iota. 96, Matt 12 13, 17 11, Mark 3 5, 8 25, 9 12, Luke 6 verse 10. Acts 1 verse 6, Hebrews 13 verse 19. 97, Malachi 4 verse 5. 98, Our Lord speaks here plainly in the future, 
and uses the very word of the prophecy, Malachi 4 verse 6. The double illusion is only the assertion that the Elias, in spirit and power, who foreran our Lord's first coming was a partial fulfillment of the great prophecy which announces the real Elias. Alfred, on Matt, 1711. 99. The authorized version fails to give the meaning of the original. 100. Alfred, in loco. 101. Compare ver. 23. With what goes before. 102. I pass by the special questions which might be raised as to whether death be in fact the lot of all. It certainly is not, as ver. 51 expressly states. 103. The passage might, no doubt, be read that just as the sin of Adam, if left to work out its results unhindered, would lead to the perdition of all men, so, on the same principle, the death of Christ would lead to their salvation. But this would not advance the argument the least, and it is not pretended that it is the meaning of the passage. 104. Is it certain that pi omicron kappa to omega tau gamma is equivalent to the kappa alpha tau alpha chi theta nu iota omicron of philosophy 210? The latter is a classic term for Hades, the former is used by the LXX. In Exodus 20 verse 4, the water under the earth. Why should Hades be brought in between the earth and the sea? 105. The words in square brackets are not expressed in the original. 106. The death of Christ viewed as the acme of his obedience. See Alfred on Philosophy 2 colon 8. 107. If any should shrink from the use of the word justification in respect of any but the saved, will they consider what other word would convey the truth involved? Forgiveness would be a faulty substitute, and clearly inaccurate, and with God immunity from punishment assumes the absence of guilt. 108. See page 78 anti. 109. Tau Pinu to Alpha, Genesis 1 verse 31, LXX. 110, Kappa Alpha Tau Alpha Lambda Lambda Sigma Sigma Omega. 111, Kappa Alpha Tau Alpha Lambda Lambda Alpha Gamma. 112, Pi Omicron Kappa Alpha Tau Alpha Lambda Lambda Sigma Sigma Omega. 113, Synonyms, Second Series. 114, the AV, in translating the word by a verb, suggests a gradual reconciling, but this is misleading. 115, The Gospel and Its Ministry, page 259. 116, see page 37 ante. 117, Having learned to trust the absolute accuracy of Scripture, I have no doubt there is a designed distinction between the sin of the world and the sins of the world. But as I do not pretend to write a commentary on these passages, the above exposition is carried no further than the subject requires. Let it not be forgotten that they who deny the verbal inspiration of Scripture are merely quibbling when they rely on any such statement as the Baptists to prove anything. 118. The above remarks apply also to John 12 verse 47, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. 119. The following is the list, Gen 315, 12 colon 3, Psalm 103 colon 9, 139 colon 8, Lamb 3 31 dash 3, ISA 57 colon 16, 45 colon 21, 49 colon 9, 53 colon 11, O 6 colon 1, 14 colon 4, Micah 7 verses 18 and 19. 120. In the following concordance the words used in the authorized version to represent the Greek words specified are printed in italics. 121. Compare XGR Revelation 14 verse 11 with 19 colon 3 and 2010. 122. Beta Sigma Alpha Nu Omicron is literally the touchstone, then, a test, a trial whether a thing is genuine, then torture, tormenting disease, etc. 